Kent Hughes and Vincent Le Cavalier met with members of the media earlier today. Are they nervous? Are they excited? What are they trying to achieve in the short term? What are they evaluating exactly? If the draft was tonight, would they pick for sure? Are they looking for the better player right now or the player that projects to have the better career? And Vinny LeCavalier talked to one of the three players that Montreal will select to find out where he's at and how he dealt with the pressure of this past season. Oh, yeah, and that's right. They told us it's one of the three, not more than that. Will they take the pick? Will they trade the pick? Who will they pick? We discuss. I got a feeling. I'm Marinaro. It's a sick podcast. I'm going solo today. Turn up your volume. volume. Because you're about to listen to The Sick Podcast with Tony Marinaro. The Sickest Montreal Canadiens Podcast. Now, a 24th Stanley Cup banner will hang from the rafters of the famous forum in Montreal. The Canadians win the Stanley Cup. Sports entertainment like no other. Brought to you by 8.6 Beer. Intense by nature. And Lacage. If the last time you went to Lacage was when the Habs won the Cup, it's time you went back to Lacage. The menu will surprise you. Hey, was the last time you went to Lacage when the Montreal Canadiens hosted the NHL draft? If that was the case, that was back in 2009. That was 13 years ago. Time flies when you're having fun. The menu will surprise you this time around. I absolutely love the place. I can't wait to be there. I'll be there on Thursday, July 7th, the night of the draft. I'm going to be at Lacage Bell Center because, of course, we are hosting the sickest draft party that Montreal has ever seen, and it'll start Thursday at 6 p.m. Now, uh, we told you to RSVP, and I can tell you that it is completely sold out. So we appreciate all the interest, everyone calling us, everyone trying to get a hold of us. Uh, but at this point, well, there's nothing more we can do. The place is completely sold out, which is good for Lacash. We look forward to seeing you then. All right, and it's also brought to you by 8.6 Beer Intense by Nature of the Beer for those who follow their instinct and live their passions in order to make their mark. So Kent Hughes and Vincent Le Cavalier had a chance to meet with members of the media earlier today. And of course, they were asked a ton of questions, mostly about the NHL draft. And they were asked, are you nervous or are you excited? Let's hear from Kent Hughes. Uh, and obviously, when you're sitting with, with the first overall pick, you're excited. Uh, you know, I, I expect that we're going to use that pick, but I won't. I can't sit here and promise that we wouldn't if we received a phone call and it was too good to turn down. Um, so, yeah, I think we're, we're, we have the ability to add an important piece to our organization or pieces because we do have multiple picks in the draft that we're hopeful uh, will be part of, you know, the next 10, 15 years of this organization. As far as the potential to make trades or change our roster. You know, the one thing that, that we're clearly trying to do, we've been, you know, upfront about it, and that's why Shea Weber's contract was traded, is we're trying to achieve some financial flexibility or, or cap flexibility, so to speak, so that we can, one, sign players that we have and hopefully add players as we as we move forward. Having said that, I don't think they're in a hurry to add players. I really believe that Kent Hughes looks at this and says, you know, one of the keys to success is a proper rebuild. A rebuild is not just a one-year overnight thing. Take a look at the Colorado Avalanche who won the Stanley Cup. Before the Avalanche won the Cup, people said, yeah, well, rebuilds necessarily don't work, right? Uh, it didn't work for Toronto. It didn't work for Arizona. It didn't work for Buffalo. It didn't work for Edmonton. It didn't work for Colorado. Now Colorado won a Stanley Cup, so you take them off the list, and now they're going to say it didn't work for Buffalo, and it didn't work for Arizona, it didn't work for Toronto, it didn't work for Edmonton. But if one year Toronto or Edmonton wins, well, then you'll take them off the list. Listen, for the most part, it works. We've been down this road before. Washington doesn't win the Cup if they don't draft Ovechkin at one and Backstrom at four. Tampa Bay doesn't win the Cup if they don't draft Stamkos at one and Hedman at two. And, of course, they drafted so many other great players as well. But without Stamkos and Hedman, they don't win the Cup. Um, Chicago doesn't win the Cup without drafting Kane at one and Taves at three. The Pittsburgh Penguins don't win the Cup without drafting Flurry at one, Crosby at one, Stahl at two, Malkin at two. The list goes on and on. And the Colorado Avalanche drafted Nathan McKinnon at one, Landis Cog at two, 
um, Makar at four, Byram at four, and Rantanen at 10. Uh, they were bad, very bad for several, several years. And I think the Canadians realize that that's the winning template. And yes, they're trying to achieve cap flexibility uh, and trying to have the ability to add players. But I think it's going to be a slowly but surely process. All right. So they're pretty excited about having the number one pick. But I like the way Kent Hughes approached it really by saying, hey, we don't rule a trade out of the question. And, you know, this is his way of telling other teams that if you want the number one pick, it's not out of the question, but you're going to have to come at us with a great offer. So now what are they evaluating exactly? Because one of the things that they told us today was that it's they're deciding between three players, Shane Wright, Yuri Slavkowski, and Logan Cooley. One, a left winger, Slavkowski, and Wright and Cooley, centerman. So what are they evaluating in these three players? Let's take a listen. Trying to evaluate, John, how a player projects, right? So we can look at a hockey player and say, this is what he is as a hockey player at this moment in time and where he's playing. They're playing in, you know, players are playing in different leagues at different levels of hockey. And we're trying to look at them and say, this guy's able to do this at this level. Can he do it at the next level? So there, there's a hockey component to it too, right? There's a positional component. There's all these things that we're evaluating. Can he play at that position at the next level? The other part, and, and I think part of why, you know, Vinny had his conversation with, with Shane and, and uh, will likely have conversations with the others too, is to understand it's hard to be 17 years old and, and be under the microscope uh, as Shane has and others before him. But it's probably almost harder to be the first overall pick in Montreal. So as part of our evaluation, we're not just evaluating hockey players, we're evaluating character, we're evaluating their, uh, we're trying to evaluate their ability to deal with that type of pressure on a consistent basis. All right, some very interesting thoughts there, but I want you to hold on to that and I want you to hold on and think about the word projection. And we're going to get to that a little bit later. Who would you bet on? Betway, for the love of the game, sign up and deposit on Betway for a 100% deposit bonus, the easiest sports book for Canadians. Each transfers are accepted. Who would you bet on? Would you bet on Shane Wright to be the number one pick by the Canadians? Your Slavkowski or Logan Cooley? Uh, would you bet that they're actually going to pick with their number one pick or are they going to trade it? Now, Kent Hughes was asked, if the draft is tonight, what are you doing? Let's hear from him. <clears throat> Je suis conscient que ça sera pas la décision la plus populaire pour les partisans. Euh, puis comme j'ai répondu à François, dans le moment, si le repêchage a été ce soir, on, on, on va repêcher un joueur. Mais en même temps, je pense que ma responsabilité, c'est de, de travailler en fonction de le bien de, des Canadiens de Montréal dans le futur. Alors on va sûrement euh, toujours regarder les, les options. We're going to take a look at all options to improve the team. But if the draft was tonight, we are picking tonight. So who are you picking? Are you picking the best player right now or the best player in a year from now, two years from now, five years from now? What are you looking at? You're looking at to have a player come in and make an impact right away. Yes or no? Let's hear from him. Je pense que c'est vraiment d'évaluer les joueurs. Um, Dans le fond, qu'est-ce qu'on fait, c'est de prédire le futur d'un joueur. Où est-ce qu'il est présentement? Est-ce où il pourrait se rendre comme joueur de, dans la Ligue nationale? Euh, Puis c'est vraiment là où nos évaluations font. C'est pas de, de déterminer qui est le meilleur joueur de 18 ans. C'est there you have it. It's not that the marriage world of 22, 23, 24 ans qui peut, pourra nous, nous, nous aider. Uh, se rendre sur le chemin où on, uh, il nous aide à avoir une équipe capable de gagner d'année à l'année. There you have it. It's not to determine who is the best 18-year-old, but who can be the best 22, 23, 24, 25-year-old and who can help us get better year after year after year. As for Vincent Le Cavalier, uh, he picked up the phone and he called one of the prospects. Who did he call? He called Shane Wright because they have a lot of stuff in common. They were the projected number one pick for their draft year for probably three or four years before the actual draft. And in that final year, the year of their draft year, 
they found it difficult because there was a lot of pressure. So they have a lot of things in common. And they had a chat. Let's hear from Vincent Le Cavalier. Uh, oui, mais j'ai parlé avec uh, Shane par téléphone. Um, C'était plus un peu pour savoir, uh, parce qu'on était pas mal dans la même situation. Puis même lui, je dirais que ça fait uh, trois ans que son, uh, son statut de... Tu sais, qui parle de numéro un pour lui. Fait que... Um, c'était plus de comprendre un peu comment, euh, comment que j'ai géré ça cette année. Euh, puis dans le fond, j'ai commencé la conversation par dire comment que moi, je me suis senti quand j'étais, euh, euh, je dirais, la, la, la dernière saison à Rimouski. Je trouvais ça difficile, que c'était beaucoup de pression. Là, tout le monde te disait à tous les jours, tu vas être, tu vas -tu être numéro un, tu vas -tu être numéro un. fait que c'est plus de comprendre euh, le jeune homme... Euh, euh, dans le fond, de comment qu'il a, euh, qu a géré ça cette année. Puis, euh, évidemment, aussi, euh, euh, on parlait un peu de sa, sa game, un peu de. de une, belle, une belle discussion. Disons que euh, j'ai appris beaucoup sur lui, puis euh, c'est une bonne personne, puis qui, qui, euh, qui évidemment, qui, qui a, qui a des, euh, des hauts standards. Euh, alors, euh, oui, vraiment, vraiment une belle discussion avec lui. Vinny Le Cavalier says a great chat with Shane Wright. Here's a guy who's got very, very high standards. I learned a lot about him. He's obviously a very, very good person. Uh, talk to him about, you know, uh, the way he was able to handle the, the stress and the pressures of being the projected number one pick in the draft. And look, I'm going to come out and say it right now, a couple of days before the draft, I'm asked every day. I don't know who the Montreal Canadiens are going to draft. And the reason why I don't know who the Montreal Canadiens are going to draft is because I think that the Montreal Canadiens at this moment, they don't know who they're going to draft either. Based on some of the things I heard and Kent Hughes talking about the fact that it's not going to just be on one year, they have scouting reports on these kids going back a ways, especially on Shane Wright. I think Kent Hughes rattled off five or six different tournaments that he's seen Shane Wright play over the last two or three years. And so he said, it's not just going to be about this year. It's going to be about what he saw in the past, what he saw this year and what they project as well. When he said, it's not about drafting the best 18 year old. It's going to be about drafting the player who will be better at 22, 23, 24 and 25 and who will be able to handle the pressures of playing in Montreal because Montreal is a different animal. I think the guy they want to draft is Shane Wright. I think that's the guy they want to draft based on everything they had seen in previous years. But I think where they're concerned is that he may have had some difficulty this year in dealing with the stress and the pressures. And they're probably saying if that was the case, how is he going to be able to deal with it in Montreal? So The conversations that he had with Vinny LeCavalier, Shane Wright did, and the conversations that he had with Kent Hughes, I think that's probably going to determine whether or not he ends up being their pick because I think they're willing to forget about having three or four inferior months to another player if they're convinced that he's going to be able to deal with the pressures of Montreal. If they don't trade, if they don't draft Shane Wright, it's because after the talks that they had with him, they believe that the pressures of playing in Montreal for a Shane Wright will be too much, and he probably won't be able to get over the hump. As for Slavkowski, he did extremely well versus men at the Olympics, extremely well versus men at the World Championships, and they probably think that because he plays in a men's league and already did very well versus men that he'll probably have an easier way of adapting and maybe dealing with those pressures. So, you know, if you were confused today, probably confuse us a little bit more, but this is what we know. It's between Wright, Slavkowski and Cooley. That's number one. Number two, if the draft was tonight, they're drafting, but it doesn't mean that they're going to be picking on Thursday night but it sounds like they will be. He was also asked if there's a chance that they can have maybe a chance at both of those players. And Kent Hughes says, 
or two of the three players. And Kent Hughes says, there's a chance. There's also a chance that we trade our first round pick. There's also a chance that we trade our second round pick. I mean, it's one of those draft years where just everything is on the table. So long story short, I guess you can expect the unexpected. A shout out to matrixhomefitness.ca. I have it set up here, a treadmill in my studio. And I know in yellow has the elliptical and uh, I have the rower as well. I brought it home. Discover a club quality workout in the comfort of your own home. Visit matrixhomefitness.ca. Of course, when I say in yellow and Sammy are talking about our uh, our producers and our CEO uh, behind the scenes. All right. On uh, another note, they were asked about uh, Carey Price. Nothing really new to report. Uh, Kent Hughes laughed at the situation saying, hey, the second I have any news on Carey Price, I'm going to let you know we'll have a press conference just for Carey Price. Once again, he was asked about uh, Jeff Petrie and whether or not there's been any movement there. He reiterated what he has said on numerous occasions is that uh, Petrie's family um, have a little bit of a challenge in terms of uh, vaccinations and in terms of having family come visit and stuff like that. It leads you to believe that there are members of the family and the extended family who are not vaccinated and traveling and all that stuff becomes a little bit of a challenge. And uh, he basically said that, uh, hey, we're going to try to accommodate but not if the Montreal Canadiens are going to be a loser in this. If the Montreal Canadiens can trade Jeff Petrie and they're going to be a winner in it, we'll accommodate. If we're not going to be a winner in it, well, then he's going to come back. And, uh, you know, with a fourth child on the way, Kent Hughes said, Petrie's got a fourth child on along, uh, you know, coming on, uh, coming up. And he said, you know, look, I know it's not easy for your wife to take care of four kids, but he said, you know, while I was an agent, my wife took care of three and we're able to get it done. But once again, my gut feeling is that, Jeff Petrie will be traded, all right? Uh, I don't think Jeff Petrie is going to start next season with Montreal. I don't think Carey Price is going to start next season either. I wouldn't be surprised if Carey Price's situation ends up uh, an LTIR situation, and that's it. So, look, there's a lot of excitement in Montreal. The Canadians are going to host a draft for the first time since 2009. Uh, Three months ago, everyone thought they were picking Shane Wright. Now, no one knows who they're picking. It makes it even more exciting. We can't wait to share in the excitement with you at La Cage at the Bell Center on Thursday, July 7th. This is Marinero reminding you, by the way, to tell your friends about the Sick Podcast. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's absolutely free. Anyone who's anyone in the world of hockey is in Montreal this week. This week in Montreal, as far as hockey is concerned, is going to be sick, like the Sick Podcast. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the Sick Podcast with Tony Marinero on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts. The Sick Podcast is brought to you by 8.6, Intense by Nature, and Lakage. If the last time you went to Lakage was when the Habs won the cup, it's time you went back to Lakage. The menu will surprise you.